We're continuing the Shir and Likutei Alochos, Orachaim, Chele Gimel, Hilchos, Rosh Hashanah, Inyan Shoifer. Rav Nosson Zal is going to speak about the Shoifer. Al pi ma shekosav Rabbeinu Zal, b'maymar tohimoy sichasimu, based on what Rabbeinu Zal writes in chapter 9, in the first half of Likutei Imran, al posuk tsoihar ta'asel ha-tevo, u-pesach ha-tevo b'tzid ha-tosim, tachtiim shniim u-shlishim ta'aseho. These are psukim in Parshas Noyach, which describe the, the Teva of Noyach, which Rabbi Nezal in that chapter, and Likut Imran, expounds on. Very special. And now Rabbi Nezal is going to take that chapter, and Likut Imran, and use it to give us incredible insights about the Shoifor and about Rosh Hashanah. V'haklal, shekasher ha-choyshech v'haklipois misavavim mikol tzad, Rabbi Nezal explains there, that when darkness and the forces of evil surround a person from all sides, Iker Hatikun Alideyemes. The main solution, the best solution is truth, honesty, sincerity. Shetire Sheyetse Hadibur Shebetfila Mipicho Beemes. That the person should see to it that the words of Tfila that they're speaking, they should be speaking with honesty and sincerity, meaning that even if a person is being attacked by their Yetzirah and the Sitra Achra, and they can't daven with hislavus, with fire, with, with nuclear energy, with deep, deep passion for Hashem and for the Torah and for Yiddishkeit, Rabbi Nezal says, when you find yourself in that kind of predicament where that fire is shut off and where the sitrach is surrounding you on all sides, as long as you'll say the words and you'll say them with truth, just simply translating the words in your own mind and meaning what you're saying, that truth, emes, is the most incredibly powerful light in Judaism, in Yiddishkeit. If he'll use emes, Hashem will turn on a light for that person. As the Pesach says, Hashem oiri v'yishi. Hashem is my light and my Yeshua, my salvation. And we know there's another Pesach that Rabbi Nezal quotes over there in Likut Imran. Hashem oircho v'amitcho. Hashem is your light and your truth. So that when a person is connected to truth, he's connected to Hashem. When he activates Emes, he's activating Hashem. He's turning on an incredibly bright light. And that will shine a path for him. That will show him an exit, how to exit from that darkness that he's trapped in. Ayin Shom Hetev. Study that chapter on Likut Imran very thoroughly, Torah Tess. The Yoiser Mima Shekosov Shom, Shomati Pe El Pe Mi Piv HaKodosh. And here Rav Nosson Sal goes out of his way to say that besides what's written there, Rav Nosson spoke to me much more elaborately, but he elaborated on it and he emphasized it. Vayideze Nase Tikun Hatfila. And through this Emes, the person will be able to, to make the tikkun hatfila to correct, to improve, to complete his tfila, bechinas Yaakov Uvanov, in the form of Yaakov and his sons. Ayin Sham Hetev, look over there in Likut Imran, where Rabbi Nezal shows us that Yaakov Avinu and his sons represent tfila. He had 12 sons, which correspond to the 12 Nuschois HaTfila. And Yaakov Avinu is also very special in Tfila, as we're going to see soon. And Yaakov is Emes. The Pesach says, Titein Emes Liyakov. So even when a person isn't feeling the fire, the Hisoyorus, the Simcha, the Emuna, the, the, all the different connections to Hashem, Rabbi Nezal says there, if you latch on to one thing, if you'll be emestic, if you'll say the words of tefillah, be'emet, nothing else, just saying the words, translating, and trying to mean what you're saying, nothing more, 
that'll that'll take you out of any kind of darkness, any kind of yerida, and lead you back to Hashem, back to the tzaddik, back to being totally connected and turned on. This is the introduction. Now Rab Nosson Zal begins, paragraph Aleph. V'zeh b'chinas koil ha-shoifur. This is the whole concept of the sound of the shoifur. Shehu meramez al tshuva. The Gemara and the Rambam and all the Svarim Akdashim tell us that what the Shoifer is all about, it's all about waking people up to do tshuva. Bechinas, as the Pesach says, shapru ma'asechem, improve your deeds, beautify your actions. So we see that the word shapru is referring to tshuva. Kamashikosov, and as there's the other famous Pesach, uru yeshenim miter damaschem. Wake up, you who are asleep spiritually from your deep slumber. That's the message of the shoifer. V'yalkein shoifer hu bechinas al And this is why the Sifrei Kabbalah tell us that shoifer is a concept of Olam Haba, the world to come. Shehu bechinas bina, which is associated with the sphere of bina, which is the eighth sphere if you're counting up from the bottom. If you start from Malchus, Working your way up, chesed is number seven, so that chesed through malchus, those seven midos of Hashem, correspond to the physical world that we live in, which was created in seven days. When you go past that, when you keep going up and you go into Bina, you've left this world, you're going into the next world. Olam Haba, Bina is called Almadosi, Bechinas Tshuva. Kiyodua, which is synonymous with tshuva, as is known. We know there's a famous posik in Novi where the posik finishes with the words Ulavovoi Yovin Vishov Verofoloi. His heart will understand and he'll repent and he'll be cured. That's one of many psukim that show us that tshuva is a concept of bina. And if tshuva is bina and bina is oilam haba, then tshuva is a concept of oilam haba, which is called yoim shekuloi shabbos. Olam haba is called a day of all shabbos. And we know that shabbos is tshuva. The shavto ad Hashem aleikecho. You'll return to Hashem. Shavto is the letter shabbos. Vezehu bechinas koil hayoitzei mena shoifor. And this is the concept of the sound that comes forth from the shoifor. Shehu bechinas koil emes this corresponds to the, the voice of truth, the words of truth that come from the depth of a person's heart when he's feeling very low and very down and very far from Hashem spiritually. And despite he, he doesn't feel like he can speak to Hashem passionately, so he forgets about the passion and he simply tries to be truthful, to say the words and mean what he's saying, nothing else, to translate the words literally in his mind. Bechinas, as the Pesach says, Mi ma'amakim kirosicho Hashem. I cry out to Hashem from the depths, from the lowest places. Bechinas, as is written about the Shoifor, Min ha'meitzar korosiko. We cry out to Hashem from the straits, from the from narrow pla- from constriction. Dehainu, shemachmas goidel his gabrus hamesavev mi kol tzad, because of the fact that the satan, the yitzhara, is is so powerful against the person and is surrounding him on all sides. He's covered the person with darkness on all sides. Azai poinimatzmom el hoemes. What does the person do in that situation? He turns to truth. And he cries out to Hashem with truth from the depth of his heart. That's how the person can get himself out of the darkness. As the Pesach says over there, by the Mabul, when Hashem imposed a mabel, a flood on the world. Hashem turned off the lights on the entire world. And Hashem told Noyach, you have a way of saving yourself within all of this darkness. How? You're going to make a teva. Teva means an ark, and teva also means words, words of tefillah. And this teva, upesach ha-teva You're going to create an entrance and an exit for this teva, on the side, on the side, there's going to be a Pesach, an opening. This is how the Pesach concludes. 
Ononi vamerchavko. I start out from Meitzar. Meitzar means straits, constriction, a very tiny opening. Ononi bamerchavko. And when you, Hashem, when you respond to me, when you answer my prayer, you answer it bamerchav, harchova. You widen the opening. You give me a big, wide opening to go through. The person is zoiche by speaking diburim of emes, he's zoiche to widen the opening and be able to escape, to get out of the darkness. Because we know this, the sound of the shoifor symbolizes truth. Yaakov Avinu, as the Pesach says, titain emes liyakov. Yaakov is synonymous with emes, and Yaakov is synonymous with sound, with koil. Bechinas ha koil, koil Yaakov. The Torah tells us the koil, the sound, is the, 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 is the sound of Yaakov Avinu. So when we talk about the sound of the shoifor, that's Yaakov Avinu. Vizeh shekos of Rabbeinu Shalom. And this is why Rabbeinu Zal writes over there in Torah Tess and Likudim Ram, that she Yaakov hu bechinas ha tefillah. That Yaakov Avinu is tefillah. Ki iker tikken hatfilo al yedei emes kanal. Because Rabbi Nezal tells us over there that the tikkun of tfila, the most important tikkun of tfila, is emes, truth. Shezeh bechinas Yaakov kanal. That's Yaakov Avinu. V'yalkein loy nizgar batoiro kiim trua. Ushar hakoilois onu lamede misham. K'moisham razal. And this is why the Gemara tells us that in the, chum- in the Chumish, you don't find any mention of tkia or shvarim. The only sound of the shofar that's mentioned in the Chumash is trua. Rosh Hashanah is called yoim teruah yielochem. And the Gemara learns out from the word trua because there's a debate of what trua is about. They learn out shvarim and trua, and they also learn out that there's got to be a tkia in front, tkia in back. Ki trua hu bechinas Yaakov. Because we know that trua corresponds to Yaakov Avinu. Tkia Shvarim Trua corresponds to Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov. And the main one is the Trua, Yaakov Avinu. She'ikar koil ha-shoifor marame olov, where the, main, the essence of the shoifor is really associated with Yaakov Avinu. V'yalkein ha-trua hu genuchi gonach v'yeluli olil. And this is why the Gemara tells us that the Trua represents its two in two forms. One is genuchi gonach, sighing, and the other one is yeluli yolil, a certain kind of moaning. Hainu ma shegoinech v'yolil v'koyre l'ashem l'asaralov. This refers to a person who finds himself far from Hashem. And what does he do? He sighs and he moans and he groans, feeling terrible about his predicament. V'yalkein kol trua and this is why the Gemara learns out that every trua has to have a tkia in front of it and a tkia in back of it. Pshuta means the sound of tkia. This gives us a picture of the process of tshuva. A person starts out being a good boy. He was being good. Okay, he was being straight. Tkia is a straight sound. When a person is going along a straight path, hainu koidem hakilkul, before the person messed up, v'yachar shenizkalkel, and after the person went off the derech, they messed up, v'nishbar, they broke, they broke with Hashem, they broke their ties to Hashem, kachas v'shon, bechinas cherpo shavro libi. As the Pesach says in Tehillim, cherpo, my shame, my embarrassment, my sins, my mistakes, broke my heart. So shvarim and trua represent where the person breaks, he falls, he commits sins. Bechinas vayerdefum ad ha shvarim. They chased them until shvarim, till they were broken. Azai al yedei ha trua shu bechinas emes kanal, and when a person goes through that process of having a broken heart and, and apologizing to Hashem and confessing and all of that, he goes back to Tkia. He goes back to that straight path again. So that the format, the Tkia Shvorim Tkia, or the Tkia Trua Tkia, represents what a Baal Shuva goes through. He starts out Tkia, 
he falls into Shvarim or Trua, and then when he comes back, he goes back to Tkia. He goes back to being straight. Now you'll understand why the most important time of blowing Shoifer is on Rosh Hashanah. Ki oz hu is gabrus hadinin. Shehem bechinas hachoyshech. Because Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of yoim hadin. That's what it's called. And the din is synonymous with darkness. Midas hadin, judgment, harshness. Chesed is always a concept of light. And, and din is a concept of darkness. So when Rosh Hashanah comes in, which means the Midas Hadin has been activated, which means a Choshech has fallen on Klal Yisrael, what do we do? We blow the Shoifer. We activate the Emes, that coil of Emes, that coil Yaakov. V'hu zikoroin liyoyim rishoin. And the Shoifer reminds us of the first day of creation. Ki oz betchilas habriya govar hachoshech shekisa pnei toim. Because Hashem tells us on page one, line one of the Torah, v'ho'oret soisa soihu v'voyu v'choshech al pnei sohoim, that in the beginning there was all kinds of darkness, v'ruach eloikim rachefes al pnei amoyim. And there was a spirit of Hashem which hovered over the water. Rav Nosan Zal explains. So we see that in the beginning of creation, there was darkness that covered the tohoim. V'ruach elikim, and the heavenly spirit, Shehu bechinas Yaakov, which is synonymous with Yaakov Avinu, Shehu bechinas Ruach, Yaakov is always associated with Ruach. Kamay Shekosva, as the Pesach says, Vatechi Ruach Yaakov Avihem, the spirit of Yaakov Avinu came to life, Shehu bechinas Emes, and Yaakov Avinu is synonymous with Emes, the spirit of Yaakov, this emes, this light, was hovering over the water. To chase away and to eliminate the darkness through emes, through truth. And this ruach elokim led to the revelation of light. As the following Pesach says, Vayoimer lekim yehi oir. Hashem said, let there be light. Vayhi oir, and there was light. Kamoshe Kosov leil, as we mentioned previously, shal yidei ho emes meir oir Hashem yisborach. Chinas Hashem oiri. That through emes, a person turns on the light of Hashem. And Hashem oiri. Kamoshe Kosov shom bayer heitev. As Rabbein Azal explains very clearly over there on the Kutim Ran. Again, based on that posik Hashem Oircho Vaamitcho, that MS is Oir. Ayin Shom, look over there and Likutim Ran, you'll have it very clearly explained. Vaideze Nishave Habriya, and that's how the world was created. That there was a darkness, and then there was this MS that dispelled the darkness. Vialkain Emes Hu Kium Hoilam, and this is why MS is what keeps the world. Uh, what 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 sustains the world? Ki ikar habria alide emes, because the main creation was through emes. We know the Torah begins Bereshis Boro Elokim. The last letters of those three words are emes. The final three words in creation at the where the, about Shabbos Asher Boro Elokim Lasois. The last letters of those three words are emes, showing that from beginning to end of creation, what's the beginning? It's all emes. And this is why the Gemara says, Al Posig Boiracho Yaakov, your creator, Yaakov. The Gemara says, Oilami, Oilami, Mi Baruch. World, world, who created you? Yaakov Baruch. Yaakov created you. Ki Iker Bria Soilamai de Bechinas Yaakov, Shubhinas Emes Canal. Because the main creation of the world, where Hashem took the darkness and he dispelled it with light, was through Yaakov, which is Bechinas Emes. Vezeh Shomorazal, this is what the Gemara says, Tshuva Kodmoloilam. That Tshuva is one of the things that preceded the world. Ki Iker Hatshuva Alide Emes. Because as Rabbein Azal explains, 
in order for a person to be zeichet to tshuva, one of the most important things he needs is emes, truth, which is what clears away the darkness and creates an opening for the person to get out of the mess that he's in, to get out of the filth and the darkness. Shebechina zois kod maloilam. This preceded the world. Tshuva preceded the world. Vaydezeh nishave bries oilam. And that's how the world was actually created. Bechinas v'choyshech al p'nei soim. That there was a darkness. And then there was a ruach alaykim or a chefes. There was this ruach alaykim, ruach, bechinas yaakov, emes, vayhi oir. And then there became light. Vialkin Rosh Hashanah Shehu Zikoroin Liyoyim Rishoin and therefore Rosh Hashanah which takes us back to the beginning of creation we see on Rosh Hashanah Ze Hayoyim Tchilas Masecha this day reminds us of the beginning of creation Vialkin Oz Maschil Yemei Tshuva and that's Rosh Hashanah is when we begin the Aseris Yemei Tshuva Vialkin Toikin Oz Bashoifor we kick off the process of Tshuva with the blowing the shoifer, shu bechinas koil emes, the sound of emes, she pesach, which creates an opening, umar chivlotzeis, and widens it to allow the person to exit, to get out of what they need to get out of. V'yalkein shoifer kotzer melamalo v'rochov melamato. Now we'll understand also the unique shape of a shoifer. Strange. It's very narrow on one side, very narrow opening, and very and wide on the other side. And the Gemara says, you must blow only from the narrow side. And if a Baltokea would know how to blow out of the other side, the wide side, and make a sound come out, it doesn't count. No credit. Because a person who wants to enter into the Kedusha, he wants to enter into Tshuva, he's got to come in through a very narrow opening. Bechinas, as the Pesach says there, Upesach HaTevo Betzido Tosim. This narrow opening on the side of the Teva. Rab Nosanzal says, And as Rab Nosanzal explained to me, Besides what's written over there in Likut Imran, Shetzorich Lasois Pesach Chodosh Daiko. Rabbein Azal explained that when a person, Chas V'Sholem, falls from Hashem, they fall away from the Kedusha, they fall from Torah, so they left. It's like the person walked out the door from Hashem, they left. And Rabbein Azal explained to Rabbein Azal, when the person wants to come back, they can't come back through that same door. They have to create a new door. There's got to be a new opening from the side, a side entrance, for them to be able to come in. Ukemoshom Razal, as the Gemara tells us, Shehahei doime lo'ilam hazeb. The Gemara says, there's a Pesach that says, Ki beko Hashem tzura ilamim. With the letters Yud K, Hashem created worlds. Worlds is plural. With the letter Yud, Hashem created olam haba, the Olam Ho'emes, as it's called. Yud is the smallest letter to show us that only the little people are going to be the ones who are going to get into Olam Haba, the Jews, the Tzadikim, the humble ones, and also the few people. It's not for the masses necessarily. And number two, uh, so that's the letter Yud, and with the letter He, Hashem created this world, the world that we live in. And the Gemara says over there that the letter He, V'chol Haroitzelotzeis, the letter He has a wide opening on bottom, showing us that whoever wants to leave, if anyone wants to leave Hashem, the door is wide open, no problem. Umin Hatzad, Psucha, and on the side of the He, on the left side of the He, where that little leg reaches up to the top and doesn't touch it, there's a little, little opening there, there's that small opening on the side. That whoever wants to come back, if a person fell out, if they want to return, they want to come in, they come in through that side entrance, that tiny little opening there. And the Gemara asks over there, One second, what does he need that? Why can't he come right back through the same way he left, through that wide exit on bottom? The Gemara says, it won't work. It doesn't work that way. Ayin Shom, look over there in the Gemara. 
וזה בחינס הוא פסח הטבע בציד אוטוסם. This is the פוסק that Rabbein Azal quotes over there. That the entrance to the טבע is from the side. בציד אודייקה on the side. That's side entrance. Not the main entrance. כי צורך לכנוע את דייקו דרך הפסח הצד, שהוא מן הצד, היינו מצד ההי הנ"ל. The person has to come back, a person wants to come back in תשובה. They have to be ready to come in through a side entrance, that side of the hay, that side of the Noah's Ark. ועוז השם יסבורך מרחיב לו יפסח ומציאוי. And if the person shows a willingness to push, to struggle, to squeeze in through that, to that side entrance, that little tiny opening, then Hashem eventually widens it for him. ועוז... Again, min ha-meitzar korosiko, I cry out Hashem from the straits, from the narrowness, and then Hashem responds to me, and he, ba-merchav, har-chova, widening. V'zehu b'chinas ha-shoifor, this is what we see in the shoifor. Shehi kotzer melamalo, it's a very narrow opening on one side. V'tzorech litkoya, u'lohi tziya koil ha-shoifor, shu koil ho-emes, mimoko ima tzar daiko. The baltokeya has to blow from that narrow side, to bring forth the sound of the shoifor from that narrow side. V'oz ha-shem isporach marchiv lo'i. And then if the person makes that effort, then Hashem widens the opening for him. to welcome him.